and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally and internationally known as the Money Lady. Since 1976, I've been advising and counseling people on all facets of money management. And um, gosh, gee, you name it, it just looks like I've done it. And the older I get, the more embarrassing it becomes because they're like, how the heck this woman done all this stuff? But 36 years and counting, I've been on that place. But today we have an extraordinary show where we're going to be talking to two experts in the area of employee benefits. Now, for those of you that do not know what that means, well, it means that if you work or have a business, you probably have employees. And if you are a traditional business, you have components with regard to the enhancement of your employee's work environment through a variety of benefits. Most notably, and I would say um, most powerfully, is the Affordable Care Act, which is in place right now, also known as Obamacare. And whether you like it or not, it's not going anywhere. And so I'm here to talk about that and to talk with them about that and get their impressions, opinions, and recommendations. As always, I always like to bring you the very best in the industry so that you can make the sound financial decisions for your life and for your families. And those of you that are business owners that are watching today, again, I encourage you to sit down and get a pencil because there's a strong possibility that you may not be getting the entire story. So without further ado, I'm gonna go on and introduce my host, to, uh, my guest today. And we'll start with uh, Frank Lopez, Jr. Nice yes. to have Thank you me. here. Very good to see you. With Saxon Consultants. And Jamie sure, Charlton, nice who is the founder of Saxon Consultants, an employee benefit company that you began in 2000 and one. Yes, ma'am. Correct? That's correct. And with headquarters in? We're in uh, northern Cincinnati, the, northern the Mason Cis area. In the Mason area mm -hmm. of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to be going back and forth with the two of you. What gives you the chutzpah <laughs> as a young man to start an employee benefits company? Well, as you know, with your experience in the industry, um, a lot of the big companies, they, they claim that they're independent. But at the end of the day, there's a little push to, to sell this product or oh, sell that yeah. product. Oh, yeah. All their product focused. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. I, when, you know, I, I, when I started, I truly wanted to be able to provide, when I walked into a client, an independent, unbiased approach. Mm -hmm. And so after a couple of years with the, the larger international company that I was with, okay. got my feet wet, learned the business, decided, you know, I want that approach. So in 2001, um, we decided to strike out on our own and, and start Saxon so that we can provide it. We are completely independent. As I tell my clients, they're my boss. Uh, I don't work for a bigger company. Mm -hmm. um, so from our securities all the way to our insurance recommendations, they are completely what we feel is best for the client, working hand in hand to understand that client. So that's, that's what started it. And here we are coming on our 14th year. So That's impressive. That is Thank impressive. You. I noticed from your uh, credentialing that you are a certified financial planner. Yes, ma'am. Great. Yes, ma'am. And you're also on the Sharonville, Ohio Board of Directors of for, their Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. It's a great chamber. Uh, it is a great time. chamber. Yeah. I have, yeah. so I'm not a member, but I am definitely <coughs> going to make that move in 2014. We would welcome you. I, welcome. I think it's a great, great group. So let's switch to you, Mr. Lopez. Yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I, uh, I started about the same time Saxon became, I guess, born. Okay. Um, I started in the industry from just being an assistant, answering phones, filing for different agents, and learned the back office first. So okay. I learned the problems that can come across, that people come across with benefits, the challenges. Mm -hmm. So for the first nine years of my career, I was uh, account management, claim specialist. You, know, you handled with, claims? Yes. I would Ooh. be, I'd be the, the foot soldier that would go oh, out yeah. and find those problems, be that problem solver and uh, bring peace of mind to, to people that were they're having trouble understanding or uh, maybe a billing issue. But uh, mm -hmm. at that time is when I really found that uh, I love this business. I love to help people. 
Um, it's a it, remarkable business. It, it isn't can be it? a challenge. It's a yeah. necessity for for everyone. And uh, if I can make uh, make it a little clearer or lend a hand and, and uh, just be an informative resource for them, that's really what I wanted to be. So uh, about five years ago, I turned to the sales side. And you're starting to see that more and more. Now, what we are seeing, because we do have a, a retirement group in okay. the office okay. that does nothing but specialize in, in retirement planning. Yes. It's interesting because you're starting to see a resurrection of, of defined, defined benefit, benefit in small group. In small group. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So a person can work, because let's be direct. Yeah. And I say this having coming out, out of Wall Street and all this stuff, the average person is working for a living. Yes. They're not pros. They don't know how to time the market mm -hmm. yeah. and when to move assets in and out and Absolutely. up and down. And so most of them, I think the statistics are saying that most people in 401ks have not done well. Right. The, you know, they just haven't, they haven't hit the market right well, and, and they don't have anything. Well, how many times have you watched a news program in the last five years and, and you're seeing people that say, I don't even open my statements, I put them in the drawer. I, 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 it, that, that is just, <laughs> but you know what, who wants a heart attack? Oh, I hear you. Because then that's yeah. another employee benefit, you know, yeah. health care. Yes. Which on the subject of health care, mm -hmm. huh, <laughs> talk to me. I don't care who talks, somebody yeah. needs to talk to me first because things are out of control. We know that. Mm -hmm. They've been going that way yeah. with health care expenses. You can't get anything done, mm -hmm. I mean really, without paying a whole lot of money. Yeah. And if you don't have the upfront cash and you're working, you hope that your employer has a health care plan. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because how do you cover everything from having babies, to more progressive age-related uh, challenges mm -hmm. that we get as we get older. Yep. So now we have a new guy on the block. And I don't know about you, but I'm like, what, what? what? <laughs> I don't understand any of this. Yeah. So let's talk about the Affordable Care Act, okay. and also known as Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And lots of other names, <laughs> good and bad. Yes. But, you know, let's talk about that. And you talk about changing times. Mm -hmm. Whew! Oh, this yeah. is a changing time. Yes, it is. What do you say, Frank? Well, I think that uh, there are some good and bad things that are they are going to come of this. Um, it is a challenge as far as the, the high rising costs that are trying to be controlled. But I'd say the good thing, the positive thing, are, are those people that were uh, turned away for so many years because they did have cancer, because they did have heart attacks. And they were, they were it was just very tough for a person that was on, on their own in their business and mm -hmm. they weren't part of a group. Or maybe a, a mom that stays home that wasn't, had, didn't have the opportunity to, um, to get group health insurance but was being denied individually. Mm -hmm. Now these people who have been turned away so long this is, this is a venue for them. This is gonna be uh, a place where they're gonna be able to go get health care, and they're gonna get the proper treatment. And I think that's a great thing. I think that is an okay. absolute great thing, because they're-, they're Conceptually. It's, it, yeah, it's been, it's been tough. It's a, mm. So, and I think sometimes the misconception is mm -hmm. that this was built for everybody to get cheaper insurance, and that, that really isn't the case. Um, what I have learned is, is what it's built for are the people that couldn't get it before, and the lower wage uh, worker that just couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And when you say couldn't afford it, the employer couldn't, uh, was not even a part of the Even with the employer, employer contribution, you have, a really? lot of, you have a lot of industries out here that even with that employer contribution, they're still making $10 an hour or, mm. or you know, even 13 to $15 mm -hmm. an hour. It's a big challenge because even with that contribution, the premiums are so high. The, really? The benefits are so stripped down that, you know, it, it's tough to afford. It very, it, it is. Uh, so there is a segment that I think is going to benefit, and I think that's a great thing because. So give me the grid, and I'm just saying that the the mission of the Affordable Care Act, A.K.A. Obamacare, yeah. was to allow people with pre-existing conditions, pre-existing and low wage and low workers, wage workers, yes, which frankly is where America is. There's a lot of them out There's there. There's a lot of people out here mm -hmm. that are working for very little yes. subsistence mm -hmm. wages, I right. would say, right. so, under $15. Yes, so it was, it was built for those, that okay. segment. And when they built it, they obviously realized that it's gonna be very expensive to, to fund 
a, uh, a marketplace that's going to take on all illnesses. It doesn't uh, matter what you have. We're yes. going to cover it. Everybody come on. How does um, this happen? How does this work? So Yeah, so, so that's where the individual mandate comes from, you know? Okay. So their thought process is, look, okay, well, it is going to cost a lot, but how about if we put an individual mandate that says everybody must get insurance? So that way that that younger, healthier group has to get insurance or else they're going to pay a fine. Hoping that they will jump into the pool too, because then it'll offset some cost. So the young are going to, out of necessity, would you say, Jamie, as I understand this, mm -hmm. the young would have to be subsidizing the sick. Yes, and that's that's bottom line. Somebody's got to pay for that. And that's, that's right. the experiment that we're okay. going to see if it works or not. Because young people are going to shoot themselves. Young people are going to shoot themselves <laughs> because you could take a 21-year-old and make 90, pay $95 a month. Right. This year, they're going to see their premium jump four or $500 for that same plan. No, it's, Jamie. Yes, we've been running numbers in our in our agency because as of October 1st, yes, yes, the, the marketplace opened. Yes. Um, it, which you know we haven't had much luck getting people on, but we've been able to run rates. And yes. when you look at the rates compared to what people thought, the the subsidy, the subsidized mm -hmm. portion of that premium is not as great as as what the expectations were. So you're starting to see some of these folks because you got to remember the the two key elements to to getting help are household income mm -hmm. and then how large your family is. Okay. Okay. So if you're if you're a single person making twenty five, twenty six, thirty thousand dollars a year you're seeing the subsidy not be very much because you're a young person ah. taking care of just yourself. Remember when you were starting out, you really didn't care, you know, bag of ramen noodles. And, uh, hey, you know, it you're works, right, it you works, know. it right. works, it works. You know, but it, it, where it's really helping to Frank's point are those folks that are the, the middle class, the family of four or five, mm -hmm. you know, living, as you said, living paycheck to paycheck. That's where this thing is really coming into play. But then the second element is take a look at what the plan designs look like. Mm -hmm. And that's where I challenge, that's where, mm -hmm. that's where I think the, the rubber meets, needs to meet the road. Now, I'm just one voice in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, of the whole world. But, but a powerful voice. But I don't I, dismiss that. But I think what where we really need to start is because we need to get the doctors and the insurance companies and the government together in a room and say, okay, how can we control the cost of care? Well, I'll tell you what, what many hospitals have done strategically mm -hmm. uh, is they bought all the, ho the doctor yeah. practices. So the doctors are no longer a voice because they are W-2 employees yes. of the hospitals. You, Am I right? You're right, and I can't I've blame observed, them. I, I don't blame them no. either. Nope. So now you've got the players, as I understand it, mm -hmm. hospitals and insurance carriers. Am I right? You're right. And the yes. government. And the yes. government. And, and where the government comes into play, is, and you saw this last April, Okay, when, when they were talking about making a cut to Medicare. Yes. And all of a sudden they did a 360 and they raised the Medicare allowance. Right. You saw those stock prices of these carriers jump through the roof. Yes, because everybody saw. You got it. The future. You got it. So where, where the carriers are struggling is they've got a large, and it's only going to get worse as, as the baby boomers continue to age. Mm -hmm. What do they say, 10,000 a day turns 65? Plus 10,000 of us for yeah. the next 20 years, <laughs> 78 million of us. So that's a, that's a big number going that's to Medicare. That's a bunch of us, and we are the Pepsi generation. Too. It, <laughs> so we're going to be hobbling into the future. Yeah. Okay. And so, how do you take the reimbursements from the government on a Medicare basis, right? And fund the cost of care for the docs, because if you look at how the docs get paid, seventy-five percent comes from private insurance. Well, the private insurers have to continue to increase premiums to cover the cost of care because the reimbursement from the government is set. You can't compete right. with the government. Right. You can hold a, a health care company or the doctors, health care company can hold the doctors that whatever side of the mm -hmm. seesaw you're on, right, right. hostage. Okay. So that's why you always see these carriers and these doctors having a feud. Anthem's not going to do this network or Medical Mutual or United, mm -hmm, whoever mm -hmm, picked mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. They're in a feud with, feud with this network of doctors okay. because these doctors want more money mm -hmm. or the carrier's not going to pay them more money. Okay, so how do we even out that level with this huge entity known as the government helping out the docs cover what's going to become a larger portion of care in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. Or are you going to have docs that say, you know what, I'm, I'm out of the Medicare and Medicaid business because I don't get as reimbursed mm -hmm. as much. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of them have gone, especially your general practitioners, have gone to the hospitals. So they're just the employees of the hospital. Yeah, because they don't have to pay their, mm -hmm. uh, we you call know, it, you know, but yeah, yeah their the malpractice is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that takes away their, their liability, their overhead's gone. Mm -hmm. So it, it's... To your point earlier, it's a very dynamic, changing system. Now, I also will put 
the onus back on the user. Okay. You'd be amazed, Michelle, how many times I walk into a group of 20 people. One of the largest provisions of, of the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. that started back in 2010, so it's not brand new. Exactly. Is preventative care. Okay. You'd be amazed at how many people st not, still do not get preventative care. I'll say, it costs you nothing. Okay, and we'll walk into a room, Frank and I, do an employee meeting. Yeah. How many people have got their preventative care checkup this year? Are you talking about the basic blood work? Basic blood end? work, pap uh, mammogram, that, if you're uh, a yeah, routine yeah. exam. Right, yeah. right, right, routine, routine physical. yearly physical. Immunizations for kids, flu shots right, right, right now. Right, right, right. Is that covered? 100%. 100% covered no preventative money out of pocket. care. It doesn't matter what no plan you're on. No out-of-pocket, and they will not do the basics? No. Well, that puts them at risk for everything. It's deeper than just uh, health care. That's insurance. That, and, that's, and, that's where, and that's where we as, as brokers try to educate, but you rub your head going, okay, guys, we understand that you don't want to pay all this money, but you understand that if an insurance company can get that coverage for you and stop a cancer when it's just one right, place instead right, of invasive, right. how much money that's going to save you on your premium right. because that's less money. Right. So it, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle that wow. takes a lot of educating. And I don't know if, if the American people have to get on board as much as the other entities we talked about, the government, the, the carriers, the docs. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a team game. Well, I would think, and I just say this because I am a health fanatic. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those green people that does not and will not eat processed food or anything else. I just won't do it mm -hmm. because I'm convinced you're going to die. <laughs> people say, well, you're going to die anyway. And I say, yeah, but, you know, it would be helpful if you didn't die from something horrible, yeah. right. you know, Absolutely. like why not just get old and die, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. what, what about that, yeah. you know, I'll take, right. it. I'll, ta right. I'll take that, yeah. but I am concerned if they are not, even those that are currently getting benefits are not doing something as basic as preventative care that is 100% paid for, then what is that about? What's going on here? Because you all are the point of contact. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I. What is this, Frank? I'm at a loss, to be honest <laughs> with you, because, I mean, the the administration is trying to take the step, and again, I think that's a depending on depending on a couple of things, but the Affordable Care Act has two provisions in it. Okay. There's a smoking provision. Tell me about now, that. Now, a lot of people, and this is why I said, depending on what side of the aisle okay. you sit on, not okay. politically, but smoker, non-smoker, okay. you may not like this. Yeah. But we've had, again, going back to the, the numbers we've ran for subsidy, okay. if you're a smoker, okay. that's a 50% penalty. So you're seeing some people that may qualify for help, they're getting zero because that 50% doesn't come on your premium, it comes out of your subsidy. So oh, now, Oh my goodness. When you apply for okay, the exchange, so here comes the stick. You, yep. You, it asks right there, smoker, non-smoker, or tobacco, non-tobacco. And you lie. Well, well, if you lie, I'd say yes. The majority are probably gonna. <laughs> yeah. If you lie, if then you, lie. you know. Hopefully, you and the IRS sign good standards. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. they're the ones that will come back. Right. And, and get it. Mm -hmm. um, and the other piece of that is the administration is also put in a perk for wellness. Oh, good. So, so an incentive for those Correct. who are interested in a quality of life yes. in terms of their health. Right. So, mm -hmm. but, but we've had wellness plans out for the last, it's been a big hot button in okay. our industry. Okay. And, and again, a lot of people, for whatever reason, they don't want, you know, you, you called yourself the Pepsi generation. Yeah. I call our, I don't even want to call this, but between cell phones, computers, computer games, I, I don't know, we're the, the couch generation. <laughs> People. Probably. You yeah. know, it, it, I don't know, that's the downside, in my opinion, to what this law can do mm -hmm. because everybody is now insurable. Yes. So if I sit on my couch all day and develop type 2 diabetes, which you will, I can just yeah. get on the insurance. I don't need to worry about underwriting. I don't need to worry about being healthy. I can get on and pay the same rate you, who is a health nut, is paying. Yeah. But see, that is where, um, I guess, that is where my challenge is mm -hmm. because in systems where there is no reward for good behavior then and there's no penalty for bad behavior and the playing field is level yes, right then that doesn't work <laughs> that doesn't work i i mean just help me here mm -hmm. what am i missing and mind you yeah. i do believe um, that it is important that children have care. Absolutely. I absolutely am inflexible around little people having 
adequate food, adequate care. Um, they're little people. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for them. But I have a challenge, Frank and Jamie, with grown people yeah. smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, doing any and everything else, and crunching in front of a television looking like Porky Pig, <laughs> talking about, hey, I'm game too. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works. Have you all looked at the pricing? Mo Is there a penalty for people that uh, are not careful? No. No penalty? Not anymore. No. Not anymore. As of one, one of 14 that's gone in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Now, in the tri-state area, you used to have it. To Frank's point earlier, you'd right. have the underwriting penalties. For these types of things. But right. the playing field is officially level. Every, it's fair for everybody. It's fair, <laughs> but that's not fair, Frank. It's not that's fair. That's not fair. But that's, that's they're, they're trying to please they, everybody. No. Now, to, to that point, though, there are, some, there are some plans out there for business owners. Okay. That if you have a healthy group or you want to implement a, your, your company, mm -hmm, you want mm -hmm, to implement mm -hmm, a wellness program, mm -hmm. and you want to say, you know what, we're going to a non-smoking workplace, we're going to implement a wellness program. Okay. There are other products out there starting next year that you can get onto <coughs> and the insurance companies would love to have you because you're going to be a healthy group right. where they're going to underwrite just based on your 20 or 30 employees. Also select underwriting. They can do. There's opportunities ah, for those people okay. that want to stay healthy, want to initiate a healthy right, workplace right. to get off of the the fairness train. Yeah. Yes. We'll call it that. So you, there, you there is a dual tracking here? Am there I is a that? dual tracking but you got to remember it's, a, it's going to be select because these guys can cherry pick who they want. Very particular. Now. Insurance companies are there to make money. You of know? course they're there they're, to make money. They're working Everybody, hard to find America's strategies. This is America's capitalism. Yeah. You know, they're working you hard like to find strategies else. and solutions. <laughs> Absolutely. They want strategies and solutions that are going to help folks, healthy Their bottom groups, line. Get, around, get around this, uh, right. this ACA uh, requirement. So. Well, see what I see happening, and this is really, really disturbing because this is actually looking more like, um, in an odd way, the uh, disability component for Social Security, mm -hmm. where people never paid in mm -hmm. to that system. Now hear me well, I think that people that paid in our seniors are entitled to that, their money, I'm sorry if the government didn't calculate actuarially aging properly, too bad, work it out. <laughs> but I, I'm challenged when I look at the disability component component because that to me is entitlement which is if you're disabled from anything mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. and you can prove your case then you get a check for the rest of your life yeah period mm. and there's no consideration to all of the others of us that labored and worked to pay into a system that we are entitled to receive uh, a benefit. Mm -hmm. And I suspect, and I don't want to conjecture here because, you know, as an economist banker, I don't like to do that, but the thought that comes to me is at the point you have a pool that is non-exclusive and anybody can qualify, mm -hmm. then they're going, that, that pool is going to bankrupt. Speaking of which, have you tried that number to, to, to do an exchange? There's, I, a, there's a number mm -hmm. that you call or go on online, yes, excuse me, online. not a number, online. How's that working? I've, I've tried several times. Me too. <laughs> I quit. Because, you know, that's part of our, that's part of our uh, job is to okay. be informative and know that, you know, what are, what are our clients trying to do or what is the general public, what mm -hmm, are they facing? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it was uh, every day last week, and I haven't tried this week yet. But I haven't tried this week either, but I know, did try last it's, week. It's, it's week a very before. tough road. It's a yeah. very tough road right now, and as to Jamie's point, you know, uh, right now, all we're be able to do is we do have uh, calculating systems to where we can show at least here's what the rates are looking like. Here's an idea of what's out there. But as far as signing up, it's we've advised people just to wait until probably late November, maybe even December, until they figured this out. Let's uh, hope they do. Because, but you know, again, that's something we help out with too. Because that's that's going to be a challenge of ours, uh, small business owner that that just you know is having a hard time affording it. The exchange might be a move for them. So how does this work? He he's your client. Yes. He's got a, a a pool of say forty employees. Right. Say he's a manufacturing mm -hmm. shop, mm -hmm. and so he's got forty employees, a mixed bag of health. Yes. Some are really really young and healthy, and some are old and sick. Yes. And would be uninsurable normally. Right. 
How does he work with, what do you, give me a scenario. How uh, does this that's, work? That scenario, I do have a client like that, that, you know, and, and every, uh, I think, employer group has that segment that may not make high wages, has that lower mm -hmm. income. Right, right. So right now, what we're doing is, hey, let's look at your, let's look at your incomes, let's look at wh who we have here. Mm -hmm. uh, here are the people that we should target because it may be beneficial for them. That's to the not number be one a thing. Part of the yeah, it's the number one thing. Is is that we're not going to come in there and say, "Hey, employer, this is going to help you out. Let's get uh -huh. rid of these sick people." Uh -huh. No, let's see if it's good for them, and if it's good for you, and if it's a win-win. Here are your options, because that's really my job. Is really to present options, not not really say, "Hey, this is how we skirt around something." Mm -hmm. you know, oh so, no, you don't. So want we would go either, in yeah. there and we would target those folks. Mm -hmm. We would come in there, hopefully set up a time that's good that we can come in there and sit face to face with that person, one on one and help them through the whole process. Whether we have one of our account executives there mm -hmm. with uh, a laptop and helping them through Running the site mm -hmm. uh, and, and informing them on those options. And that's really how we would like to see it go. So uh, can an employer have people go to the exchange? Yes, yes. In, uh, see, in, that's what I'm confused about. They don't have to insure everybody in their group? The under, the under 50, well, pretty much anyone, yeah. They do not have to insure anyone. Their, their, their decision is simple. Amazing. Their decision I'm is simple. Serious. They can get out. They can say, you know what, this is just too expensive for me. Go find it somewhere else. Uh, Go find that's it. That's about it. But you'll find the majority, I found the majority of our clients are saying no way. You know, a lot of them are just simply saying, I don't want the government to tell me what to do. But a lot of them are saying, this is just not the right for thing. for business people. These right. Business people are accustomed to controlling their world. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. They're, they're not followers. They're leaders. Right. Right, so we see a, okay. the majority of ours are saying, oh, it's going to stay the way it is as long as I can afford it. We're going to do that for our employees. So how um, do you afford it? Because, wait, a, well, it depends on your group profile, correct? Mm -hmm. so if you've got a healthy group profile, then the issue of premiums is not going to be as much of a challenge, possibly even lower premiums, given the cherry picking? Well, I, I wouldn't say lower, guaranteed, because i I, I got to say, um, one thing we've been privy to in this probably fourth quarter is to see from carriers, there's been a majority of them that said, all right, well, we're going to project next year's renewal. Yes. And next year renewal is looking like this. Oh, what but if you, it? if you, well, I can tell you, I have a, a very healthy landscaper group that has yes. all males. That yes, okay. Probably within their late 20s to 30s. Okay, that's a healthy group. They were going to see at least a 40 to 50 percent increase in their rates going to the new structure that it's, it's labeled community rating, and that's where, again, they're not underwriting, they're taking all comers. So they're projected, and that's a young group. I would say the demographics between 18 and 55 years old, you're going to see a, a pretty good increase in that segment. 40 to 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Oh, at least the highest I've seen is 70 to 80. I mean, so, so <laughs> what, what we've been me, doing, and right? I, I'm sure people that have been doing uh, the right thing mm -hmm. in our profession yes. is getting out in front of this and uh, reviewing their plans before this year ends because... So is that a strategy yes. you all would recommend that any small business organization... Or individual for that Or matter. individual yes. review their situation now. Yes. Oh, if and, they call, and if they haven't, and actually if they need help, they need to call you. Hmm. That'd be, What's that'd your be number? <laughs> No, give them, give me well, your Well, I'll, I'll give them the website. Okay, I think, uh, give Sac them a website. Yeah, www.saxonconsultants.com. Saxonconsultants.com, yes. Dot com. You'll, you'll see a wealth of information out there as well as a roster of, of all the professionals that we work with and contact emails and, and phone numbers. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, please reach out to us if we can be of help. Um, well, yeah, because this is just so a maddening. Even so a conversation. When, does, when do we have to be compliant? When do we, what's the big day? 24th July or January 1st. January 1st. 2014. That's every, right around the corner. Everything changes, yes. And, and that's, that's where the law begins. That's where community rating comes into play. So now to your point earlier, Michelle, it's 12-1 uh, is a magic date. Okay. That's the last day that someone can lock in on a group. Individuals have until 12-31 of this year, of 13, okay. to get, take advantage of those lower rates that Frank mentioned. If you don't, 12 1, December 12 1, the 1st of, of 2013. Year, 13. If you're a business owner and if you've not reviewed your plan yet, a small business owner, mm -hmm. and you've not reviewed your plan, 
And when I say small, that's 50 employees or under. Okay. Okay. Because that's the group that's going to be affected by community rating next year. The the all one for all price. Okay. 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 The the numbers that Frank's referring to, that will give you the ability to lock in a rate based on your demographic. So okay. if you're a young healthy group from 12 one of 13 to 12 one of 14. So it gives us a year to work with you to figure out if you're one of those groups that mm -hmm. can go on your own or if the carriers have designed something else or if our friends in D.C., I don't care what side of the aisle you're it on, matter. have finally decided what they're going to do because mm -hmm. the one thing we have to remember is all they did was put a Band-Aid on it last week. They still oh, have no, another I'm battle coming up. Yeah. I'm real clear. They January, February is going to be the right. fight of the, the century. And I don't think the, the public, I think they're mm -hmm. so fed up, they just put their head in the sand. But there's another battle coming that yeah, could also biggie. affect this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who knows what's going to happen. So that allows that business owner to lock in. The penalty, the pay or play penalty that everybody's talking about, yes. that has been rolled back for 14 until 1-1 one, one of 215. Is that for small companies that's as for, well? That's for companies of 50 employees or more. Okay. So what about the smaller companies? The small companies are all set if they renew on 12-1 of this year. If okay. not, they just take their regular renewal. So if it's January, February, if your company renews in June next mm -hmm. year, you didn't take advantage of that 12-1, then you would renew, to Frank's point, at that 30, 40, 50, 60 percent number. Jeez. So the 12-1 date is critical yes. for locking in the a more favorable rate. More yes. favorable rate. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd like to make sure that we're clear that it doesn't work for everyone. It I, we have been seeing the majority. It will be beneficial for okay, you. Okay, for 12-1. Yes. i got to make sure this, this telecast airs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. on television <laughs> immediately because you're not going to make me believe the majority of small business owners are going to be compliant because they don't understand right and people can't make sound decisions on things they don't understand right or they're not getting that proper assistance you know but that's where you come in right, right. exactly so hmm. so there is there is a segment that we come across a lot that uh, so hasn't 12 seen one for the small yeah. business owner and 1231 for everybody else, yep. and we cannot get into the website. Not yet. That's correct. Not yet. Yikes. So that's, that makes that, that review that process date. even more important. Critical. Because of the fact that you're at least taking care of, you're being proactive, you're taking care of mm -hmm. uh, locking in a favorable rate now. Got and then, it. And then take that year. Let them work out the kinks. It gets you through that whole next year. Come next December, hopefully it'll be a little more clearer. We'll have the resources available to us to, to really compare which is which is better for your situation, and uh, mm -hmm. really it's just buying a little time. So it's just I think buying that, I a think little that's, time. I think, I think that's, that's a important. good term. Yeah. So let me ask you this: for individuals, mm -hmm. the small companies, like <laughs> under five employees, and a lot of us, like myself, I tend 99 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do not, I don't do that anymore. In the old days, I believed in big companies and lots of employees and now I want to be tight and, 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 and flight. Right. I don't want a lot of headache. What do you recommend for those companies? Does it matter what their legal status is, whether they're a C or an LLC or uh, um, you know, sole yeah. proprietor, does it matter? No, it does not matter at all. Uh, you know, 1099s, essentially, you're on your own. Okay. So the way that, they, that the government looks at employee count is W-2s. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if, let's say, you have five part-timers, mm -hmm. or uh, five full-time, but you have 300 part-timers, mm -hmm. and if you run that type of business, in 15, when the payer pen penalty comes back in, those part-timers now start counting as full-time eligibles for you. So you what may have... What did you just say? Those <laughs> part-time people start counting as full-time eligibles for you. Remember, under the Affordable Care Act, a full-time employee is now 30 hours or a week or more. Okay. Okay. So if you have, say Frank and I work for you, we're both part-time, okay. we work 15 hours a week. Okay. We now make one full-time employee for you for they that count. They combine. The hours. Yes. The hours. The, the hours. hours. So they do an aggregate. Of your part-timers. Oh, that's, stinky, stinky. Yes. <laughs> so your five, you may be in the boat where you've never offered benefits in your life. Right. But those five employees, if, if these 300 push you to that 50 number, yes. guess what? These five employees are now eligible for a benefit or you pay a fine. My words. Are you all going to be doing any, do you do seminars? We what? Do, yeah. Okay. Actually, I have two this week. Yes. You have two. I bet you do, and I bet they're packed, too, because yeah. it's like everybody's scratching their head saying, maybe I just need to fold up my little tent and disappear in the sunset. <laughs> the, the best thing to do, and Frank has said this, the best thing to do is, is work with your professional. Hopefully you're working with a good advisor mm -hmm. and you, you've got the jump on this already. Uh, we've been working with our group since this past in 2010. 
mm -hmm. to, to do it. If you're prepared and you understand the numbers, you understand what the exchanges are going to look like for your for your perspective mm -hmm. or for your uh, for your employees, then it's not that scary. Mm -hmm. it, but to your point, for those that have waited or haven't got the right advice, there is a lot of unknowns going moment. on. And the best thing you can do as an employer, educate your staff. Get out and let your staff mm -hmm. know what you're doing for them. Mm -hmm. Got it. Absolutely. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just saying to you that there's a lot that I'm not clear about, but I am clear about 12-1-2013 yeah. yes. for companies. Companies group, under 50. Under yep. 50, yes. small group, which is where America is. Yep. America's the under 50. Mm -hmm. And <clears> then for those who are just consumers in the wind. Yep. 1231. You got it. Jeez. So and otherwise, you're dealing with penalties. Not yeah, no. penalty. You're, Not just, <laughs> you're dealing with community rating. And which is the unknown. Which yes. is the unknown. Exactly. Well, yeah, right. but actually, Frank, it is not an unknown. <laughs> A lot of people think they know. That, that there is no way, there is absolutely no way that this is going to be priced favorably given the pool of people. Right. I don't understand. I mean, if you look at the aggregate model, right. we are going to be paying for health care in a way that is way, even with Social Security, mm -hmm. an employer contributes half and you contribute half. Right. This is a non-contributory plan based upon certain income levels, correct? You're speaking of the exchange. Exactly. The, yes. I am not happy well it, and that's and that's where a lot of the employers too are going to start noticing extra fees on their bill next year mm -hmm. the extra taxes, fees extra fees aka taxes but we won't call them taxes whatever the, <laughs> the carriers by themselves you know everybody thinks the carriers are, are out just to make a ton of money the carriers as a group next year mm -hmm. have to pay eight billion dollars to the government the year after that it goes to 13 billion now help help me here now why are they paying that why are private in companies, private insurance companies, yes. private sector insurance yes. companies paying money to, to help, the government. To help pay for this. Funding it. Funding the whole They're program. funding it. Yes. But we both know how this model works. I understand. Because if they're funding it, they're funding it out of premium dollars. <laughs> you got it. Because that's, like, that's, the, that's the model. You got it. And that doesn't include the $5.25 per head per employee that's going to start January 1st to pay for what we call a reinsurance fee. And what that means, to Frank's point earlier, is these carriers have no controls anymore on who comes on and comes off their plan. So if I come on and I bring a big risk with me, right. and that carrier, that, that claim exceeds a certain threshold, the, that fee that we're going to pay, that 525 goes to a pot of money that the government's going to help that carrier subsidize those large claims. Yeah. So that's being passed down. So if their actual numbers don't match what they project the cost is going to be, we're, we, they have a safety net of fees that they're right. collecting. There's an institute fee, that, the PCORI, they call it the PCORI. It's a research fee that goes to the National Institutes of Health. It's a dollar per member. That started in September. That's going to the National Institutes of Health for them to research the most efficient ways for procedures to be done in hospitals. So there's all types of fees coming on top of this to help pay above and beyond what we're paying in premiums. And it's the business owner that's being hit by it. Oh no, I'm real clear. Yeah. Yeah. I'm real clear because um, the business owner is the individual who provides employment right. and um, benefits mm -hmm. yeah. to their workers. Yes. Yeah. So, so there, there's some carriers that are blending it in the rates and you're really not seeing it and you're just getting, you know, complaining about the high rates that... Yeah, but it's that, there. Yes. I mean, you can only mask this thing. Yeah, it's going to become very clear. It's going to become clear because <laughs> business owners also crunch numbers. Well, here's one for you. Are you aware of what the penalty is next year if you don't take health insurance? I am vaguely aware. <laughs> it's one of those I'm in denial. <laughs> so, so I'm okay. You know, I'm not a drug addict. I'm just in denial. Yeah. Now, would you tell the viewers mm -hmm. What is the penalty? Ninety-five dollars a year, for a year, or one percent of your household income. One percent or ninety-five dollars. That's okay. That's that's 
that's, oh, that's, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> so if I'm a 24 year old and you're telling my premium is going to go from 90 bucks a month to three or 400 bucks I a month, I pay. And, yeah. Or I'll pay $95. I'm and just if I get pay $95. And if I develop a chronic disease, and if I get to develop a chronic disease, next year at open enrollment, I'll just jump on a plan. Yeah. No questions asked. It, does that $95 increase? Yes. yes. It, but it goes small. From, it's yeah, it's small. 95 to 395 to 695. So depending upon, because I believe that people are prudent thinkers, and we do cost-benefit analysis, all of us, mm. every day, which is, does it make better sense to do this or right. this? Right. That's all of us. Right. We do this intuitively. Do, mm. Should I do this or should I do that? Right. So at the point that the costs are lower or less, then um, the, the penalties is are lower than, the then lower than the cost, then you just pay the penalty. Right. Is there, and who is the collection agent? Ah, the IRS, yes. excuse me, that's the government, okay. Yes. The IRS is now in your collection agency and they will simply take your debt out of your tax return. You got it. Correct. If, if you, you file, file a tax return, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say if you file a tax that's, return. That's part, of, that's part of it too. That, that is part of it too. And there's one word, since we're on that track right now, something to be aware of. Okay. This program is, is in arrears. So what that means there is, let's say you're a salesperson struggling. Yes. So I go into, I, let's say I have a, a, either a new salesperson or struggled in 13. Yeah. My income was, it qualified me for, uh, for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 14, when I go to apply, well, let's say right now in open enrollment, mm -hmm. I go to apply for my 14 coverage. Right. I qualify for a subsidy. Right. Say I, I just, I have a great year in 14. Yeah. But I've been getting help every it's, month, not realizing that, oh man, I, I'm facing, I go to file my tax return in 15 for 14. Right, for 14. Guess what? What? I, maybe I get a decent return or I don't even get a return because I did so well. That money you took as a subsidy is coming out of your return. So no. So you may have a shock. No. Yeah. No. Absolutely. No. Stop, 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 stop. You're upsetting me. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? If you take that subsidy, and that's why it's called, that's why it's called a tax credit because it's all based on your taxes. Yes. Okay. If you take it monthly, you have an option. You can either take it all up front, you can take it monthly, or you can take it in arrears. But if you're in that position, you may want to take it in arrears because if you take it up front and you make too much money in 14, but the government's helping you out with the tax credit, they're going to suck that money off of your return when you file in 15. So if I had a great year and my subsidy right. was whatever, call it $2,000. Yes. They're going to come back for that $2,000 either off of my return if I'm getting a refund or I'm going to owe them for that money in, in, in arrears. So if you're in that kind of an industry or you take that's a big promotion. Pretty, that's pretty common though. Absolutely. In that industry. Yes. You have, um, sales, yeah, I mean in sales, sales, sales is what it is. You yeah. have up years, you have down years. Correct. So what you're saying to, to kind of crystallize this mm -hmm. is if I made, because I'm encouraging people that are retired, you might as well go on and start your own little businesses because you will have, if you're under 65, because you'll have this subsidy. Yeah. But if they start making money, oh, yes. then oh yes. So as I understand it, mm -hmm. first year, you make no money. Mm -hmm. So you go into the exchange and you qualify for a subsidy. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much a subsidy, subsidy you will, is? Yeah, when you go in, you will know. They'll, they'll tell you, that's what they'll we're calculate. running right now. What if you don't want the subsidy? Then you can, I've never run into that problem yet. But <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've you, not had I'm that. I'm sure because, you can decline it. No, if you don't want it, because you're, yep. you're self, self insuring yourself. Well, and that's where the first step of it would be a tax credit. So you can either take it all up front okay. so that your premium reflects that monthly, or you can take it in arrears. Say, okay, I'll pay my $500 a month. Right. And if I needed it during the year, yeah. I'll get that credit back on my return. So I'll get a decent re refund for all that credit. Okay. So if you're in that bucket, I would tell you, if you can afford it, to hold off on any credit until you know what your, your end is going to be, your modified adjusted gross right, income. Right, right. But if you right. take it throughout the year, let's say it's a uh, $300 a month subsidy. Uh -huh. So you get a $3,600 or $3, credit and you didn't qualify for that because you, you had a really good year, you're going to see that $3,600 get taken out of your tax refund. Oh my God. Yes. I. And that's where, and that's where. Oh my God. I'm not, this is, this is a phenomenal interview, by the way. <laughs> I'm just having angst because I'm going to tell you what business. We are not out of, we are still wallowing in the Great Recession mm -hmm. slash Depression, depending yeah. upon where you are. Sure. And 
This is a disincentive. This is a disincentive. Forget Congress. They're on drugs. There's something crazy <laughs> going on. I'm serious. Their mother dropped them on their heads. Something bad happened. But for the thinking male or female business owner, this has serious consequences in terms of strategic planning moving Abs forward. You got it. You can't move forward when you're looking at a ball and chain yes. around your neck. And that's where I would Ooh. coach. That's where I would coach our client. We have been coaching with you know, other people. You cannot look at health insurance as a commodity anymore, especially in small group. It used to be, okay, well, this carrier gave me this plan with these rates. To Frank's point earlier, yeah. I'm going to jump to this carrier because i got better rates today. Yeah. You can't look at it anymore. It's got, you've got to look at what works best for you from a benefit standpoint, from a wellness standpoint. Obviously, rates are important, but rates, rates cannot rule the day anymore, even though it's hard as a mm -hmm, paradigm shift mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm. You need to, Michelle, to your point, you really need to sit down and strategize. You're going to have to. Work. Do yes. you all do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, okay. That's really why, you know, we are embracing uh, Now, question, this whole are you period. going to, uh, on your website, give, give us the website again, it's, Frank. It's uh, www.saxonconsultants.com. Saxon, S-A-X-O-N, consultants, consultants, plural, plural <laughs> dot, dot com. com. Yep. And it has your seminars. Is there a fee involved for the seminars? No. These are free seminars? Yes, they are. I'm coming. You should. I, I, I intend to come. Bring a business owner friend. I, I can do <laughs> lots of them, lots of yes. them, because I really don't think, um, I just don't think a lot of people thought this was going to happen. Now, I'm just being candid just with Just like you. we said earlier, it was a lot of people that is just, they're frustrated with the government I and mean, what they're going you're, through. I mean, when you look at the long hours that most business owners work, long hours, taxes, employees, overhead, trying to generate business, right. trying to keep everything on level keel. As I tell most people, you really want to work for them. You don't want to step into the world of business ownership because mm -hmm. it that that derided one percent. Ah, oh, they have all the money. I'm like, he asks me all the time to take over. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. He's do. like, hey, you want you want to buy a business? Do you want to buy a business? You know, I give you good, and I, I won't. Say, no, and, I, and, and, I, and, I, and you can have the kids too. <laughs> yeah. you, you can have them too. Don't forget, I'll pass them on too. And the wife, if you really want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think this is extraordinary information and um, I want to say again because the time believe it or not has run up we're out of time wow, I, I told you yes. have to have you back uh, after the first of the year yeah when we see how everything shakes out mm -hmm. and how this goes for those of you that are watching today's segment I'm going to encourage you to go to the website Saxon Consultants dot com mm -hmm. and see what their seminars are remember those dates 12 1 for small business owners and 12 31 for everybody else 2014 is going to be a really rough year the budget hasn't been resolved the debt ceiling has been the can's been kicked further down the road and it's like I said on my Facebook, it's like a bad marriage, you know, which is, I don't like you anymore, <laughs> and I don't trust you anymore. And I suspect the American people are feeling that way, and business owners are probably feeling even more so, because we really do love our employees. We love the people that make that dream come to pass. So I'm going to encourage you to check them out, participate in any way you can, put the word out. And again, as always, I'm Michelle Graves, wishing you a very great day, stellar day, awesome day. Keep your mind focused on the things that are important and stop majoring on minors. So I'm going to end today's segment. As always, we God bless you, and I'll see you the next time. I'm Michelle Graves, the Money Lady. Enjoy. Enjoy.